Alright, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Trials of Fire. It's a... deck builder roguelike? I, honestly, ugh, hi. Uh, yeah, let's do the tutorial. These can get a little dicey sometimes. Oh, that was fast. Over the course of your journeys across Ash, you will encounter monsters and hostile denizens across the land. Or denizens of the land. Combat is turn-based and requires a strategic use of your party skill cards to defeat the enemy. When a battle, you have to defeat all enemies on the map by reducing their health to zero. Here, your hunter on the left of the screen is facing an injured, charred warrior on the right. Everything your heroes can do in the battle is driven by the skill cards they have in hand. Each member of your party has their own hand of cards other on the screen now. The color of the hero's cards matches the hero counter. Okay. Start by playing advance on your hunter's hand to move him into position where he can see. Okay, so line of sight matters. To do this, use the mouse to drag in. Okay. So drag that here. That kind of works. Okay, now that your hunter's in position, you can use one of your skill cards to attack. Most skill cards require willpower to be used. Willpower cost is displayed at the top right of the card. The number in the center of the recycle shrine up at the screen is the amount in use. You need one additional willpower to use the sheet card. So you'll need to recycle the other card. Power shot in your hand to afford it. Okay, so power shot, get out of here. So does that give me research? Oh, no. So it doesn't give me its power cost, it just gets me one. Well, that works, and the game volume is a little loud. Eh, I figured as much. It varies game to game. We will turn it down. Oh, this one's actually quite loud. I'm glad I turned it down before we started, because that would have been bad. Okay, now that it's an acceptable volume. Okay, you should notice the Recycle Shrine now displays one willpower and shoot. Drag shoot hero's hand to this guy, and pew. Okay, as you see now, cards in your hand can either be played for the effect described on the card or recycled to provide willpower needed to play cards. Key decision you will make on every turn in Trials of Fire, which, are, which of your cards you will play and which of the cards you will recycle to pay for them. When you feel that you've done everything you want or can do, click on the end turn. Doing this will allow heroes to take a turn, fight back against your heroes. Okay. So... So we have Swipe... And Power Shot. Charred Warriors advancing should be able to finish it off with Power Shot, so we're going to recycle both of these. I said recycle both of these, and Power Shot. It seems the char defeated Charred Warrior is not alone, but fortunately neither are you. Your party has been joined by a warrior hero. Melee attacks can be used to damage enemies who are adjacent to one of your heroes. Melee attacks will generally do more damage than other attack types, but require your hero to be adjacent. Okay, so to use a melee attack, you gotta move closer, but can't. Fortunately, never without options. Any cards may be used to move a character up to two spaces on the map. Buy this now by recycling one of the swipe cards in your hands. Oh, so we can now move. Okay, so, so we need more willpower. Change your mind, you now have enough willpower to play the attack card. However, willpower is a resource that is shared by all heroes in your party. Unlike basic movement, you can recycle a card from any hero in your party to pay the willpower cost of your cards. If you change your mind or have, a or have a recycled the card accidentally, you can always undo this by this undo this and return any unspent cards to your hero's hands. So I can click it to get it back. Oh, that's nice. So you can instead recycle a card from your hunter's hand to pay for it. Okay, so advance, burn this, now drag the swipe card to attack in melee, and then we'll do defend. So you can both, both uses recycling. Okay, you can pick up and move only the hero who owns the card. Provides willpower, which, okay. That's interesting. I'm trying to play defend, but you keep interrupting me. All characters lose half the remaining defense points at the start of their turn. Timing when to use defense card is very important. Okay. We also have advance and take aim. Okay, so take aim. Does that. Review the powers. Those stances provide ongoing benefits. Each power has its own health or resilience. It is reduced whenever they take damage. Okay. So when the card's resilience is depleted. So as long as we don't take damage, that'll help. Okay, I don't want... I was going to advance, but I guess not. So he just used a stance. There's something about combos. 
Combo attacks deal plus two damage if you're not adjacent to a friendly character. Okay, during an enemy's turn, you notice two things. Where's defense prevent her from taking any damage? Enemy also played a power card. You can hover over the charred warrior and inspect the powers. Okay, it doesn't really say. Okay, we've seen all the basic card effects in action. A few reminders, any skill card can be recycled. We already know about that. If you're unsure as to why you're unable to play a skill card, hover over it for a second and bring up a description of the effects. Continue this battle with a part full party of three or escape, go back to the main menu. Okay, we might as well continue with this. So we have this lady too. So we have an elementalist. And we've got her. Well, let's get rid of swipe. Flame fan. So we need more willpower. So that'll do one damage to all enemies in three spaces. We have advance, advance, shoot, prepare, defend, defend. And he's got combo attacks. I'm gonna advance him. I'm gonna burn that. We're gonna shoot this guy? Line of sight is blocks. And why can't she move? Because both of these guys can move. I'm gonna just do both of that. Maybe only the character that burnt the uh, card can actually move. That makes the most amount of sense. And it looks like you drop to three every turn. Owie. Well, it's an interesting system. So, let's do advance. There. Swipe. Oh! We actually... helped. That's interesting. So, s none of willpower. So, let's, let's get rid of a uh, power shot in favor of swipe. Yeah, so combo attacks are teaming up on, on the ally. Or the enemy. Okay, so let's burn the advance. Can I shoot this guy? Ranged attacks cannot be used. Okay. Let's burn flame fan. Move her here. If I do chaos missiles, it'll hit all of them. And we don't have any more willpower. gonna burn all these cards and just bail. Keep everybody together. I wonder if damage carries over from battle to battle. I have no idea. Okay, so we have Unstable Blast, Magic Attack, all targets in the indicated area. So that does potentially three damage. Let's do an unstable blast. Okay, so it did some amount of damage. Let's swipe, swipe to fan, power shot, swipe, and it advanced. So let's burn that. Move him there. Move her there. Burn the swipe. Burn the defend. Let's just do swipe. And another swipe. That'll just kill him. I was considering using power shot, but I guess it didn't matter. Okay, and victory. So it does look like we took some damage. It's a new adventure. Okay, so we can choose our characters, we can choose our items, we can choose our quest. Water gem, I guess. Not like I get much of a choice. Settlement... Terralyn is dying. Most crops will not grow in the blasted land. The settlement has relied on its hunters to bring... Meat from the beasts that roam the, roam the plains and to scavenge where they can. At first, the hunters were able to bring enough food to support the people by scavenging from the ruins of the living world. Finally, a solution is found in a living world... Found in a living world tome, scavenged from the remains of a grand library. The location of a water stone, an elven artifact of great power. The text describes the stone being used to create a waterfall to decorate the palace of an elven queen. No one needs to be reminded of the dangers of elven magic. 
the cause of the cataclysm that decimated the land. But after months of watching the people of Terralin succumb to hunger and disease, settlement leaders decide that it's time to take action. Terralin can only spare enough supplies for a small party of warriors and hunters to go forth and seek the gem. The scholars estimate the journey will take several weeks, so the party is given as much food and supplies as can be spared. The scholars can tell you a little of can tell you a little of the area beyond the immediate surroundings. It's unlikely your supplies will will last for the entire journey. You will need to scavenge what you can from the living world runes and the native beasts along the way. The party sets off early with the fate of Terralin resting on its success. Welcome to Ash. Complete your quest and save Terralin. You must undertake a perilous journey over the course or over the surface of a ravaged planet. Follow the golden objective marker to reach your next quest destination. Keep your supplies up and find weapons and equipment crucial to your quest. Party must visit points of interest highlighted on, on the map. The most important resources on your quest are the party's fatigue and food levels. Keep an eye on the party's fatigue level. Keep in top fighting form. Food supplies are your most important research, resource in this desolate land. Uh, let's see. To keep your party fresh, be sure to rest regularly. Click on the image. You will get the most benefit from resting in ruins and settlements where you can find shelter from the harsh conditions of ash. Each day your party will need to consume two units of supplies to so make sure to stock up regularly. You can view your party's inventory as well as items currently equipped by clicking on one of the hero portraits to the left of the book. You can manage... Okay. Got it. Return to the map. Got it. I. So we are here. Objective is over there. Uh, well, time to check these out. The undulating plains have become craggier with a number of low ridges ahead. There are several plumes of smoke in the distance. You get, as you get closer, you notice the air temperatures increase and you hear a hissing sound every few seconds. Ascending to the final ridge, you see a series of fiery fissures on your left and larger craters to your right, some of which are spewing forth volcanic fire and sending burning black rocks into the air. You see chunks of a black shiny gemstone in one of the craters, but the surface nearby is sprayed with molten liquid on an unpredictable fashion. See if Malkin can use her elemental powers to cool the rock. Peering down into one of the fissures, Rastin spots some skeletal remains on a shelf near the lava flow. Malkin focuses her thoughts and draws the energy from a nearby fissure. Rastin watches as the lava around the body solidifies before carefully making his way down to the edge of the fissure. He's able to quickly strip the body of some useful items before the heat becomes unbearable. So we get an Iron Claymore, which gets us two new cards. Melee attack, four on all adjacent enemies. All enemies within range two are inflicted with exposed, and we also get a forceful strike. Sure. No, that's not what I... Well, okay. How much obsidian do I even have? I will... Try... I... That's healing herbs. That's food. I have no food to spare. Okay, so let's just go that way. I'm not sure what constitutes days. It's interesting. I was expecting each one of these would be a day. In a burning haze, you spot a line of figures traveling across your path ahead. Upon approaching the group, you soon realize there's a small band of, band of charred leading two prisoners, gagged and bound in irons. One of the charred occultists approaches your party and offers Malkin a reward if she'll allow the charred to continue their destination in peace. Fight! I must fight! Yeah, I was trading to get obsidian, and I didn't really want that. Volatile. Oh, hello. Elite enemy. Elite enemies are generally tougher and more dangerous than standard enemies, but more importantly, each has a unique and dangerous ability you should always be aware of. Okay. So, two magic damage all adjacent enemies whenever the cultist takes damage. So, we pretty much don't want to do this. Every time you play a card that deals range damage, gain one willpower. So, let's burn advance. Burn chaos missiles. Actually, we want to advance her there. And burn swipe. What else we got? So I pretty much want to just pa play every power I possibly can, and then wait. Oh, I don't have enough willpower? Nah, balls. Whatever. 
above him the next turn. So we do not want to be next to this guy. Oops. He got close. Okay. So he does not have defend. So let's burn that. Oh, no, he's the one with... Okay, let's burn that. Move back here. We could do power shot. What else do we have? Flame fan. Okay, I need one more. So let's burn advance. Let's do flame fan on this guy. That sets him on fire. Blast everything. Let's see. We want to do... Defend. Defend. We're going to burn both of these. I'll hit him with a power shot. Okay, that gets me one extra willpower. Oh, I could have kind of used that. Sort of. Oh, boy. Okay, so I'm on I'm on fire in a bad way. Chaos missiles, no, cantrip. But he has focus and prepare. We have advance. No, I'm stuck. Defensive stance might not be a bad idea. Let's burn. No, no, no. We gotta burn. Defend. Move her forward. Use defensive stance. To burn a power shot. And swipe. Oh. Okay, so that did not work the way I thought it was going to. Burn cantrip. Burn swipe. Power shot. And chaos misses. Which ended up doing way more damage to her, so it was not worth it. That hurt bad. I don't know how fast we heal. Probably we don't. Hey, clicky her to level up. I'm going to level her up. I don't know if it's a good idea. So class skills. Drag a skill card from below to replace one of your old class skills. Tackle. Move four. Inflict weakened. Goad. Mail attacks deal extra damage per adjacent enemy or hamstring. I like tackle. Let's get tackle instead of... advance okay so we get some gold we get a leather shield I should probably actually put these on characters specifically you okay so we know about this better armor better than bone armor eh, kinda okay so that gets her some extra that gets him double strike and that's pretty much everything that I've got. So how do we... That. Okay. Melkin takes a crude hammer from one of the chard and breaks the iron shackles... Uh, or iron shackling the prisoners. After being released, one of the prisoners, a rattling merchant, offers to come with you and re reward. Sure. Okay, we have a follower. Get 10% better prices when buying or selling. That's not a rattling. That's a bunny. Oh, well, that's okay. Now, I have one of these. Okay, so that heals her. I'm going to keep going for these. We are now tired. So, let's go here and hope it's not a battle. Hi! Come across a human settlement that appears recently set up. So we can buy healing supplies, food supplies. I mean, we pretty much want to buy food supplies. Always. Sell the bone armor. We do have a force rod. I'm going to sell it. Okay. Belkin strikes up a conversation with the trader while the rest of the party is looking through the wares. Turns out he has a rare cured spikeback hide that he has promised for a rattling praetor in a nearby town. Unfortunately, his two assistants have been killed. So, we can deliver it, sure. Trader thanks you and fetches a large bound parcel from the back of the damaged building. He 
gives you rough directions of the rattling town and wishes you luck and luck. Okay. Good time to rest. Let's see. So we want to rest. So. Select a camp activity we can craft. Nothing craftable, though. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna rest. And everybody's fresh ish. Tall, jagged rocks line both sides of the path ahead, which point inwards at such an angle that it gives the appearance of two armies facing each other, brandishing serrated spears. Following a bend, you see that two large rocks on either side of the path have been joined by a large wooden beam. Hanging from the beam is a gruesome scene, a large human body swinging to and fro, and the wind with his entrails dangling. From the state of him, it doesn't look like it's been here for that long. A monstrous winged insect lands on the body and begins feeding on something near the poor wretch's stomach. Suddenly, the creature spots your group, lets out a startled hiss, and flees. Black object falls from the body, strikes the rock in front of you, and rolls towards you. Aslan picks up, picks it up. It's an obsidian coin. I'll scour the area beneath the body. We find some money. Probably could have gone up. Might have taken some damage if we'd done so. I like this exploration system. It's interesting. The party enters the ruins of what appears to be a giant, uh, an ancient hybrid work pit. Carcasses of giant machines jut up from the landscape, and great stone slabs litter the ground. Without warning, the sun above flares erratically, causing immense heat to beat down from above. The temperature rises quickly, and you soon realize that you're in a sun flare. You desperately search for cover, but are soon confronted by a small group of hybrid who have been living amongst the ruins. Malkin calls out to the hybrid to explain the party's presence, but they're not listening. You have no choice but to defend yourself under the sun flare. Oh, armor just gives you extra health that's temporary for the fight. Okay, so there's a hybrid slaver. So snapshot, range attack, plus two damage to the target is immobilized or if is not adjacent to any other character or obstacle. Okay, so snapshot would be not bad. Let's prepare. Extra willpower at the start of your turn. Wouldn't be bad. Okay, cantrip, flame fan. Let's burn flame fan and defend. Burn swipe. So we have four. So let's do prepare and snapshot. That's a nice four damage. I'll get back in the way. Okay. Oh. Oh, because of the sun flare. Owie. So we gotta do a buttload of damage. We got adrenaline. Power shot and double strike. Well, she's got four health, so we're gonna burn that. We're gonna burn focus. Burn that. And we're gonna burn advance, block, and double striker. There we go. Before before the sun can murder us. Okay. So get those and we level up. Uh, let's work on this guy. So line up. Move to your next attack. This turn deals plus two damage. That's not bad. Take aim. All ranged attacks deal plus one damage. Repinning thought inflict immobilize. Ooh. Honestly, we should probably do pinning shot. That has a lot of potential. So let's get rid of power shot for a pinning shot. You come across a human caravan in the dusty wasteland. The group consists of three wagons, all badly damaged, and what appears to be a large family of humans. After questioning the leader of the caravan, it appears that they have recently fought off a group of hybrid raiders, who attacked them as they were traveling to a nearby settlement. You spot two human bodies being tended to, along with a member of hybrid, a number of hybrid corpses. None of the wagons appears roadworthy. The caravan has little hope of continuing a civilization with that help. Uh, spend a day helping them. I've got some food. Eh, maybe. It's quickly set to work finding wood to fix up the damaged wheels and struts of the wagons. 
Takes a few hours to gather the necessary shapes from the few petrified and burnt out trees in the immediate area, and a few more to aid the family to fix up the wagons. Eventually, the two wagons are in a drivable state, and the third seems beyond repair. The humans set about transferring what they can from the broken wagon. Leader thanks you for your aid and offers you a few items from the stock before moving on. So we've got a frost tome, a bone hammer, and some money. We also got a minor speed potion. These seem like things I should probably equip. So, she seems like the one to give. So, Clash versus Wide Sweep. Shout. I'm gonna go Bone Hammer. Go her, she can use the Frost Tome. And Speed Potion Run. Move four. We also have a Dagger. Stab? Nah. It gives me the dagger. A free stab. Might as well. Okay, so we're running low on food. Narrowing Plain features a small series of triangular-shaped mounds. Patches of white flaky mineral deposits and craters filled with clear liquid. It makes quite a change from the barren waste wasteland that occupies most of the surface of ash. Take a closer look at the liquid. Looks like one of the rocks at the bottom of the pool has a metallic luster to it, so Jara reaches in to grab it. It's a small nugget of gold that has formed the edge of a large white formed on the edge of a large white quartz stone. Carefully prize the gold off the quartz with a weapon. Cool. Okay, so I have mad money. And it looks like we've got that other settlement. Let's go to this one first. You approach a small looking settlement. At nighttime, as, violent, as a violent aurora storm gathers overhead, you hurry towards the settlement, hoping to find shelter from the elements. As you approach, Malcolm points out that the settlement appears to be under attack from a group of human marauders. Attacking the marauders would leave you exposed to the storm, but you're not sure if the settlement will, but will be able to repel the attack with that aid. Yes. Let's fight. I like fight. Okay, so we've got a pair of bandit robbers. Fatigue. So, fatigue, I see. So, what do we have? We've got cantrip, advance. I kind of want to just wait for them to come at me. Let's lose advance. Let's lose power shot. Let's do that. Let's get her cantrip. An end turn. Ooh. Okay, so we got to get out of the way of that. Okay, so we have run. So let's get her closer. We get a stab. We have pinning shot, or we could just wail on the dude. Let's do that. Let's do stab. And then I can do double strike. So if we lose pinning shot and defensive stance, we can do double strike. Not enough to kill, though. Let's burn prepare. Move her out here. And let's burn driving cold. Get her closer. Not the greatest, but this will be fine. Owie. Double owie. Okay, it's my turn. So we do have flame fan. I'm gonna move her. Why did I do that? Oh, that requires three. Well, I can't undo that motion. So I've made a mistake. Now we can tackle. Let's burn prepare. Burn defend. Burn the swipe. That leaves me with three. So we can do flame fan on these guys. 
And then we're going to advance her backwards. Advance him forwards. And I don't get much of a choice. That was bad placement and I screwed up, but whatever. Ugh, those li that lightning is not conducive to convenient. Oh, he was really trying to stab the shit out of her. That's well, not gonna work. Okay, so we want to burn defend. We want to burn snapshot. We want to burn chaos missiles for a swipe. And we want to burn focus for a swipe. Okay, there we go. So she took a bunch of damage, but we're okay. We'll be he healing shortly anyway. Oh, I think I had the op opportunity to level her up. Okay, overload stone barrier. Defend four on any character. Training strike, gain, melee one. No, let's grab stone barrier. Let's grab it instead of a swipe. As you finish off the last of the attackers, the Aurora Storm also seems to be abating, and you quickly take cover in a burned out home. Some of the surviving settlers until the last plasma strike has fallen. Settlers are grateful, offer to trade some goods. Now, how much money do I have? I, I have 121. Metal hammer, bone axe, or a U longbow. Long shot. Range attack, X. X is the... D oh, boy. Okay, let's sell that. That's kind of good. Either way, I want to pick up this bow. Okay, and then we're going to bed down. Okay, so let's go to her. So she can't wear the armor. But he can use the bow. Shame to lose the crack shot, but the long shot seems better. 